Sports Illustrated just laid off all its employees. How's that Telecom Act of 1996 working out for you, corporate America? Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Illuminati. The man who rules the world takes on the head of the global elite in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Illuminati on Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> On Friday, the owners of Sports Illustrated laid off almost all of its 100 workers. The publisher of Sports Illustrated is laying off most of the staff. The Arena Group announcing a significant reduction in its workforce of more than 100 employees. The company is implementing cost-cutting measures as it faces mounting debt. In a statement, the workers' union said, quote, we fought together as a union to maintain the standard of this storied publication that we love and to make sure our workers are treated fairly for the value they bring to this company. It is a fight. We will continue. Now, Sports Illustrated is an institution and an icon in the world of sports publishing. Sports Illustrated has been known for over 70 years to chronicle all of what was going on in sports such as baseball, basketball, the Olympics, and even WWE and AEW Pro Wrestling. And it's also known for its iconic swimsuit edition, which is published every year. Now, Sports Illustrated has been a household staple for over 70 years, and its swimsuit issue is one that's anticipated by men who want to look at all the sexy models in bikinis. However, Sports Illustrated may be on the road to ceasing publication, just like Playboy magazine did a couple of years ago. Now, in 2019, Sports Illustrated was sold to the Authentic Brands Group, and the Authentic Brands Group sold its publishing rights to this Arena Group. Now, Arena recently missed a $3.7.5 million payment, which breached the company's licensing deal with Authentic Brands, and this has led to Authentic Brands looking to revoke the publishing license as related to the contract. And this is the main reason why all of these nearly 100 employees have been given 90 days notice and are about to be laid off because the people who were supposed to be running the arena were supposed to make this $3.7.5 million payment and they didn't make this payment. Now, the entire Sports Illustrated magazine has been having serious issues as related to its overall publication, and that really shows me that the editorial is in complete chaos. Now, its previous CEO, Ross Levinson, decided not to hire regular writers. No, what he wanted to do was go out and start using AI-generated stories by fake authors, and that was a compromise of ethics as related to journalism because AI is not supposed to be used as related to reporting news, which is sports news. It's just unethical overall, but this was possibly a cost-cutting measure made by that CEO, and this is what led to them having issues with the arena group uh, as related to things as related to the license. Now they put in a new CEO to take care of the business, but that CEO resigned and now they are on their third CEO. And that's a really bad situation for a publisher to be in because it shows that that publisher really doesn't have a vision and it really doesn't have a direction for its publications. Because if you have staff writers and staff editors, why are you getting AI content? That's a critical question I have to ask as related to Sports Illustrated. I mean, in the world of sports, you would want to have staff writers go in to report on sports stories, not go out here and get some opinions from AI because sports is happening live and you need a reporter there to report on the story that's happening live. 
you can't AI cannot report on a sports story because AI cannot go out here and see real life experience the same way a reporter would see real life experience. So there's a real serious problem at Sports Illustrated as related to its editorial, and the editorial is more focused on counting beans instead of counting the layups that star players make in college, in high school, or the NBA, or checking out the number of touchdowns and sacks on the football field, and that's a real problem with Sports Illustrated right now. It's a real problem because it really, one, shows that the whole magazine is more focused on dollars and cents and not the action on the court because it's the action on the courts that is the thing that makes Sports Illustrated money because Sports Illustrated is about showing pictures of sports and reporting stories on sports. Now, the real problem here I see with Sports Illustrated, again, has to do with the editorial not having a vision and a direction, and that's all due to the whole corporatization of media that was established by the Telecom Act of 1996. Now, all of this relates to the Telecom Act of 1996 because the Telecom Act basically deregulated media and made it where more an individual can own more than one newspaper, one magazine, one TV show, and one radio station in an area. And this led to a conglomeration of media that led to media becoming the big six we currently have. And this big six basically only sees things through a commodified mindset. And that's why we have CEOs not looking to hire reporters what we have are CEOs looking to use AI in an effort to save money, not looking to go out and find talented reporters who can get the scoop on a story. And this is one of the reasons why Sports Illustrated sales went into a major decline. This and a push for social justice because Sports Illustrated over the last couple of years has been walking away from its core audience of men who were the ones buying Sports Illustrated on the regular to hoping to pander to those on the far left, such as social justice warriors. And as they've done this, they put an obese woman on one of their Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues and put alphabet individuals on the cover of their swimsuit issues, ones that were notorious for selling very well to large groups of men unfortunately because they decided to go for these individuals who are or what they thought were an audience to get so-called representation they wound up alienating many of sports illustrated's longtime subscribers and as they alienated a large base of sports illustrated's longtime subscribers they basically proved the point get woke go broke and this is what's happening to Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated is now in a place where they went out here pushing agendas over quality content. And as they pushed agendas over quality content, what happened to Sports Illustrated is it lost its focus, it lost its vision, it lost its direction. And as Sports Illustrated has lost its vision and direction, what has happened to Sports Illustrated is it's become a pale shadow of its former self, and this household icon is now on the brink of going out. And it's sad because over 70 years, Sports Illustrated has been a household staple. I mean, I grew up with Sports Illustrated, and I remember wanting to buy the 1997 swimsuit issue with Tyra Banks on the cover, and I was working at Food Emporium at the time, and I really wanted to buy this issue because it was Tyra, again, in a very sexy series of pictures, and I wanted to buy this book, and I might try to see if I can find it on eBay, but the whole thing is, back then, guys loved the swimsuit issue, guys loved Sports Illustrated because it had articles on guys like legends like Michael Jordan before he became a legend, it had articles on tennis stars Venus and Serena Williams as they were coming up, 
And that kind of quality content was the thing that got people excited about Sports Illustrated. But there's no reason to get excited about Sports Illustrated anymore because Sports Illustrated these days is like other publications that are out here these days, more focused on pushing agendas and identity politics instead of reporting on sports like one of my viewers does. I mean, he goes out here and reports on sports in Michigan, and that's what people want to see. We want to see reports on sports, reports on players, reports on the action, and you need journalists to do this. You need journalists on the ground, but instead of hiring journalists, what they did at Sports Illustrated with this whole company did was go out, because they were a corporate brand, what they were looking to do was go out and hire a bunch of activists because that's what companies like arena do when publishing they're hiring a bunch of social justice activists who are more focused on representation rather than representing the action on the ground because your job as a reporter is to report what's going on because people are more interested in seeing the San Francisco 49ers and their quest for a Super Bowl or a team back in the day, like when my cousin and I used to watch the NBA, the Chicago Bulls on a quest for sixth. I mean, my cousin, he was a guy, he was really into the Chicago Bulls to the point where he was writing. And if he was around in the 2000s, he possibly would have been blogging about the, about basketball. I mean, that's how passionate he was back then. So basket is like people want that kind of passion they want to hear about that type of reporting that type of journalism but instead of giving us that journalism as substance all they wanted to do was give us the flash of all of these empty symbolic representation saying oh we're going in this different direction as related to the swimsuit issue which basically symbolized the whole phrase get woke go broke because that swimsuit issue usually was the one that made Sports Illustrated most of its money. That was their best seller. And instead of looking to represent what the American man wanted to see on that swimsuit issue, they wanted to represent identity politics and represent an agenda of people who don't even buy Sports Illustrated. And that's why Sports Illustrated went from being a magazine that was a staple of life for Americans in 70 years to being on the way out of business. And this is all part of a trend in media, which basically shows me that the country is in a really bad place because we have had a series of layoffs in media ever since the pandemic ended. And we've had layoffs over at Disney. We've had layoffs over at Pixar. We've had layoffs over at Google. We've had layoffs over at places like BuzzFeed. We've had layoffs over at all of these different media platforms. And it's all due to the continuing push of identity politics leading to companies taking major losses. And they're taking major losses because they've alienated their core customer base to appeal to a base of social justice people who go out and get their publications for free on the internet on pirate websites. They don't go out here like I do and plunk down money to pay for publications or pay for what they want. No, these people just wait for something to come off the pirate website or they're waiting behind the store and at the end of the month for the unsold copies with the cover ripped off. They're scavengers who talk about activism and representation, but the whole thing with most of these activists is that they're hustlers and they're hustlers on a grift and that grift is making America go into a economic recession because with all of these layoffs, the only thing we're having is a country on the brink of recession because you don't have layoffs in an economy that's doing well and America's economy, a consumer-based economy, is doing poorly all because of this Telcom Act of 1996, which is proving to be 
one of the worst pieces of legislation because if we had repealed the Telecom Act, we could get back to competition because the reason why these activists got hired in the first place is because these companies got real comfortable, these corporatized companies got real comfortable as they consolidated media. They saw these publications as assets that they could commodify, did not see them as competitive businesses, and because these businesses aren't competitive, they aren't focused on their core mission. No, what they're focused on is going out and making a lot of money as related to appealing to demographics, but not really focused on their overall mission. And that mission was sports, and sports was the thing that generated sales. So what's happening here, again, is a direct result of the Telecom Act of 1996. And the Telecom Act of 1996 has consolidated media to the point where media is no longer competitive. And because it's no longer competitive, many of these businesses that were storied institutions like Sports Illustrated, Playboy, and even companies like Disney are starting to implode. And they're all imploding because of this deregulation, which eliminated competition. And as it eliminated competition, this is where we see storied institutions of American media, like Sports Illustrated, becoming yet another footnote in history. Now, if you want to pick up some of my publications on the SJS Direct imprint, you can find the books of the SJS Direct imprint, like the ISIS series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my black sorority novel, The Thetas, my black business novel, Recipe for Success, my black vampire novel, Eternal Night, or my men's issues books like The Man Crisis, Stop Simping, and Why 70% of Black Women Are Single and The Woman Crisis. You can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. And if you'd like to see me make more videos about the entertainment industry, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, All That Glitters. The Goddess Next Door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, All That Glitters, in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, the main event. It's carnage inside of a steel cage when the Goddess Next Door steps in a squared circle with the beast from the box in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get ISIS, the main event, paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.